Yes. Yeah, a few bits arriving. As you saw, raw water filter, Vetus raw water filter. We've got the water trap and pre filter for diesel, plus the, the hose nozzles barbs. We've got some diesel hose, which I hope is enough to run from the tank to the pre filter onto the lift pump and the return from the second filter back to the pre filter. I've got some very flexible raw water hose, which should be good, I think, enough to run from the, the uh, through hole, which is part of the, the cell drive, up to the raw water filter, and from the raw water filter through to the pump, the raw, raw water pump. Lovely. Plus, a nice lot of battery cable and the ends for that so starting to think about wiring the batteries one in there one in there connect them all up via the switch um up through to the start the motor obviously it's a pretty heavy duty battery cable good stuff nice lot of stuff arriving let's just go start doing something with it Tony and we're building a cruising sailboat and here she is, she's a 31 foot 8 uh, Benford Dory, uh, nominally 31 foot 8 I think in practice uh, with a power roller and overhangs and whatever, and a fair bit longer than that really, but anyway that's what she's nominally a 31 foot 8 Benford Dory, um, built with plywood, hard giant and one of the great things about these boats is, is that you can build them low in the, in the shop so because the keel is fitted towards the end um, and the plans are to, to get her on a trailer at some stage, ship her up to a local yard where I can get her lifted up on a crane and, and get the keel in underneath and fitted then. So the fitting of the keel will be one of the very last things that we do, which, which is nice because I say, as you see, the boat sits fairly low down, doesn't it? Yeah, so this is the, the forward deck. You just have a little scan carry with you, nice and slowly. And what you've got here is, is the, the coach roof is, is full width. So it's described as a raised deck. And then we drop down to the forward deck, which is, which is quite protected by these combings. Uh, big old dog house on there. This is my own adaption with a box here for the anchor chain. Um, so we don't have any holes going through the deck. It's the way I like it, not everybody does. We'll have two masts. You see the forward mast fit in there and up on the main deck is a, another one where the aft mast goes. Yeah, forward deck looking like this. Um, pretty much done. Plan is fairly soon in the next several weeks to, to pull her out forward so the forward deck at least will be out of the shed. It'll give me good access to the aft end there. Yeah? But I think we'll have a, have a little wander down the side and try and show you a bit about the boat. And this facade with the raised deck is 
is the hardest bit to show you because the shed is not that much bigger than the, than the boat. So we haven't got much room to get a you know, good shot of the side of the boat. So there's not much to see here, I'm afraid. Um, we can wander on down. This is the part of the shed that's the very smallest. Oh, there we go. In the aft deck, um, yeah, also nearly completed, clearly. You know, rather a tiller to come on, which will be one of the things I'll be thinking about when we've got uh, that bit forward that I was saying. I want to pull it forward enough to clear this beam because for the whole duration that this boat's been this way around in this position, I've been ducking under that beam and yeah, it'd be nice to be clear of that. But aft deck, small cockpit, won't hold much water, nor feet I suppose. Nice big lazarette, which still needs a catch, but the hatch is done. With the diesel tank and various other things in there. Um, plenty of storage in there. These combings still need a capping on. And I think I'm going to put a little storage unit right up in the aft end there. Um, still to come, but we're nearly done in here. One or two little bits, obviously. Um, yeah, looking good. Gone for sort of traditional washboards, or are they? bit bigger than standard perhaps. Quite a heavy duty hatch there. So main deck is a bit dusty, needs good clean up and obviously we haven't got a right lot of height here for me to show you effectively but um, you know it's a big flat deck. Got the stove chimney coming up, as I said the other mast fitting there, um, a couple of nice hatches in there. Big deck area which will be Interesting how we kit this out. Obviously various lines have got to come across here with, with guide runners and whatever. It's a fair bit to do here, but it's, it's a nice big area. And here we are inside. There's a diff different sound quality down here, a bit of echo because obviously we've got no cushions or anything to damp the, damp the sound. But uh, four peak, room enough for two. Um, yeah, simple thing really, yeah, two settees. A nav table here behind this bulkhead on my left. With the switch panel. And the galley area here, obviously. Uh, the old Dickinson diesel stove. A small double sink that won't take much water to, to put some water in the sink. And a bit of worktop, some storage cupboard, shelving. Heads are in here, simple enough with a what we should call a composting toilet, for want of a better word. No flush out, anyhow. Uh, yes, yeah, so they're coming on quite well. Good. So up here, this end, we've got a quarter berth up in here, which will work quite nicely as a, as a sea berth, I think. Um, yeah, so one person's up on the, up on the tiller, you know, the other person is sleeping, but they're quite nearby, within earshot. And this is where I've been working largely this week. The engine room starting to get some connections in there. Um, Volvo MD2010. Got the charge splitter in there for the batteries. Obviously, raw water filter, diesel filter in, exhaust up the back, various other bits. And another thought going on in there at the moment this week. And that pretty much is a, well, a basic tour of the boat at least.
So starting to think about the engine room, the diesel filters, the raw water, seawater filter, um, plumbing for those, so water pipes for the cooling of the engine, the diesel hoses from the tank through to the engine. And uh, state of play at the moment, it's not, <laughs> hasn't got very far. I've got made up, glued up this board that will be the mounting plate for those two filters, for the diesel pre-filter and water trap and for the, the salt water filter. And just whacked a few drywall screws for it just to hold it together. They'll be coming out later when the glue's dry. isn't it?
Just for a tidy. Another thing this week was, was the fitting of these two battery switches and a few other bits in the in the electric bay there. So in the end I've gone for two battery switches. The thinking being that battery one, battery two. This will be mainly service battery, battery one, battery two, mainly motor battery. But you have the, op the opportunity to start from motor battery or if need be from, from service battery or of course both to start the engine and this one will be the loads so the basic you know the things in the boat lights and, and whatever um, which normally would run off battery one but you do have the opportunity to run off battery two should need a rise which is less likely so I've gone for two battery switches in the end and that means a bit of tidying up around here which is still to come but coming on Close with it. That's all right. Then here's a little electric bay. The back of the two battery switches there. Got a negative bus in here. Um, it's a big old battery box that will have a big old battery in it. At the moment, it hasn't. It's got a very small battery. Battery charger. It charges both batteries individually. Small one, enough. And a small 250 watt inverter. Um, and that's about what you've got to see in here, really. So it's fairly simple. Fairly simple, although not the simplest in the world, no doubt. And perhaps that leads me to a point. Yeah, you, you, you may have heard me in the past, if you've watched most of these episodes, you will have heard me in the past describing this as a low-tech boat. And, and clearly, you know, the idea of low-tech is, is relative, isn't it? One person's low-tech is, is not another's. Um, and I'm, I'm very aware that this isn't the most low-tech boat in the world. In fact, you know, I've sailed on my first real ocean sailing, or, or yeah, we can call it ocean sailing, was done on a boat that, um, funnily enough, I just found a classic boat article about the same boat. It's been bought by some people in Spain and rebuilt completely, you know, to the sort of extent that Leo's doing Tally Ho, that kind of rebuild, um, which is nice to see it back in life. But when I sailed on that boat, it had nothing. It had no electrics, it had a, basic stove but other than that and a couple of benches and some cushions but that's all it had um, and for the nav lights we used to have an old car battery it wasn't my boat but the, the owner had a car battery that he carried on board with him and sort of twisted the wires onto the terminals for the nav lights so that was a proper low-tech boat and i'll admit this isn't but i've tried to keep it simple ish you know like, functioning systems that give us a degree of comfort, but nonetheless are, are simple and, and easy to maintain and relatively cheap to install. Um, and that's what we've got in here. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Give us your thumbs up and please click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back. See you next time. Bye.
<laughs> What's going on there, Hazel? Uh, lighting. Turn the switch on, please. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Good one. <laughs>